What's up, my guys, and welcome back to Scrap Mechanic. Today, we're going to be looking at a new creation, and before we get any further, I am going to warn this episode will lag. Here's just a taste of the frame rate to come. This is a very large creation. Well, not very, not very large. It's not as big as the garage. It is a vehicle. It's very large, very complicated, and it does have a lot of logic in it, which makes it very complicated. This at the moment is known as the behemoth simply because of its size it's big and it's very laggy and it's a pain to deal with but it does have a lot of really really cool features in it that I do enjoy and do want to show off and I built it with a purpose in mind I did have a challenge to do a vehicle without a seat and this is kind of my response to it his intent was something a bit different I know but I did want to do a driverless vehicle and I did want to put a bunch of different things in it and this is my end result. So pressing the button we can get in the lift. But before we take the lift up I'm actually going to walk around and look at the outside. There are a lot of things just kind of stuck on the outside to kind of break up that flat edge that was on it before. And this kind of classifies as a cargo hauler slash mobile base. So as you can see, you got a bunch of storage down there where you can store most of your goods for sale or for whatever you need them for. Coming around front, you do have the main command center, I guess. And you do see a lot of sensors. And if you know what that means, you're going to enjoy this. So we're back all the way around. And we do have our little ramp top up. Let's go ahead and hit the button. And let it bring us up on its own. There we go. Step away from the ladder. Now, first things first, because this is kind of a smaller area, there is a ladder if you do want to get on the roof for any sort of maintenance, screenshots, or you just need a high elevation. There you go. You got a ladder to get on top. Hopping back down. I'm going to go through this later because this is where all the magic happens. So we're going to go back. The brain for this whole thing sits behind the skull and crossbones. So there's that really large dead space behind there where all of the AI and stuff is. Here you'd have kind of a more personal storage, either better items that you don't want to be near the ground, or personal things you just want to store up where you can get to them easily. Coming in the back, this is where your main house is. For the sake of lag, I didn't put any doors in, but in theory you would have doors. Bathroom. A little basic space, small kitchen with a sunroof, and a little bed just to keep you warm and cozy while you're away from home, I guess to say. As we make our way up to the front and into the driver's sit area. Here you kind of have a bit of an office and all of this. A lot of buttons some logic and stuff you can see and there's a lot of logic behind that wall which you cannot see so let me try and explain all of the commands that you can run from this chair you can also run from up here actually check that except for the lights this turns on your front lights and it's only connected there but I guess you can just look down to get them but everything can be ran from either or so if you really want to sit down you can sit down if you really want to stand, you can stand. This is meant to be kind of a first person driving experience. However, you do get in the seat, you can third person it if you really, really want to. Now, the only time I'd really use third person if you're stuck. So with this, it is not WASD controlled. You have either the green button or the one key is your start. You do have a lift under me, so it's a bit of a pain. And this does use... Are we stuck on that lift? Don't tell me we're stuck on that lift. It does use the locking steering. And I, it appears that my camera just died. So um, give me one second. I'm actually just going to turn the camera off for the sake of this video. I've already got enough frame rate issue.
Uh, let's move the lift out from under our tire. There we go. Back in. Now hit one. Now are we moving? Now we're moving. So this does use a kind of locking steering, which is on my um, arrow lifts that I used. Has that kind of steering that I used on. I'm trying to think of another thing that used it. I know my arrow lifts used it, and some of my equipment used it. I think. Anyway. So there is a dial here which tells you the direction of your wheels, which direction you're going to be going. There's a dial up there as well. And if you hit two or that gray button right there, you turn on your auto centering. So this is if you're going a long distance, you turn this on. And as you turn, the dial will turn. But as you let go, it'll go back center and it helps out. When you're doing tight maneuvers and stuff, I would actually have that off for the sake of control. You don't want it to accidentally take over and move your wheel in the direction you don't want it to. So now comes the fun bit. Button three. Button three activates a basic, and I stress this, basic object avoidance AI. It basically has sensors that tell left, right, and it has another set of sensors which tell close proximity in the case that it does get too close to something or something goes wrong the AI will shut down and wait for you to interact with it and fix the problem this doesn't have any kind of smart AI it doesn't have any kind of learning AI or anything like that it certainly turns left turns right and if there's an issue it'll shut down bef until you do something to fix that issue so I'm actually going to turn off these and turn on these if you ever turn things off you have to turn off both make sure both are turned off that is one flaw but even with the AI off you can manually input directions and it will follow it there is some issues if you try and give it a direction and it my steering is locked and it is already trying to compensate for something like now I said my steering is locked, but no, it wasn't. The AI sensed this hill in front of me was trying to move when I didn't want it to. So when you have the AI on, you have to remember that, and you kind of have to compensate for the fact that it may try and do things you don't intend it to, and it may try and take control that you don't want it to have. So you do have to keep an eye out for that. But the good thing about an AI is you can roam the vehicle. Yes, that is one of the big things. Not only did I want to have an AI with no seat, but I wanted you to be able to roam the vehicle while it was driving. So you can come back here and cook yourself some lunch or do whatever. You need to use the bathroom, you can use the bathroom. And then when you're ready to go, ready to go back up and take control of the vehicle, you can come up here, shut off the AI, and go. It's kind of like an autopilot, I guess, technically. Or is I just AI assisted? And you can, it is slow, but that was mostly for the sake of the AI and the sake of making the speed match the size of the vehicle. It is a absolutely massive vehicle. So if it was a very fast speed demon, it wouldn't really equal up. It'd be kind of awkward to drive, but at the same time, it can be tedious, but the AI fixes that tediousness, I guess, to some extent. So it's kind of hard to show off the AI so I'm actually going to hop in front of the sensors. This uses something similar to the ants I built. I They were, what were they, were like sensor tanks or something like that, AI tanks or something like that. But these far sensors and these two center sensors are your left-right detectors. So if they see something that is there that shouldn't be there, that sensor is not working properly. Hmm. Sensor 5. We'll have to look at that in a second. I actually have to look at it now. I guess it will give me a chance to open up and actually show you the brain compartment. So sensor 5 is messing up. Let's run in here. Let's run to the logic compartment. And we'll take a look at that. Like I said, it's all behind this wall. And this is what controls my 
Now, I don't know how many people have noticed this in Scrap Mechanic, but at random, values in controllers and stuff are getting deleted or changed, or you'll change it, and as soon as you go to use it, it won't be what you changed it to. That has been a major issue, a major glitch that I've noticed. It's annoying, but I can't really do much about it. Now, hopefully the sensor is trying to figure out what it should be doing. Now, the other thing that concerns me at the moment... Okay, I'm just going to say this now. When I save this, there has to have been something wrong with Scrap Mechanic, because a lot of the logic isn't being saved. Because it should be reacting with that sensor hitting. Okay. Now that center sensor you hear it beep and now it's shut off because it has encountered an issue. But I'm going to say this right now. Something's wrong with Scrap Mechanic as a whole. So many different sensors, so many different logic blocks have been changing on their own. And this is a case of that. That long range sensor should have sensed me and moved. Even if it was just sensing itself when it rotated have turned so something is wrong and it was working before so I'm just gonna blame scrap mechanic glitches because that's been something common occurring so I'll try and fix that here soon but I'm not gonna worry about it right now but it does have an AI assisted driving and the idea is when it encounters a problem it'll turn off it'll beep and then you have to just go back up to the cabin or the front command and then fix the problem manually and then the you can restart the AI and it'll go as if nothing had happened. You can see there's a red light telling you there's an issue. And let's steer out of this way because we got a tree that we're hitting. Uh, I need to hop up because I need to turn these off because I'm going to be using my chair. Let's turn off. Okay, let's turn off the autocorrect steering so that we can have full control of our steering. Now these can't go 180 or 90, or these could go a little bit over 90, can't go 180. Unfortunately, this does not have a reverse, which is kind of an issue, but an issue I've worked around many times just by doing this. It does have a really good turning radius, so it works works well enough to do what you need it to. I'm going to try and go, actually no, right here. I'm going to turn on auto center on the wheels, turn off the motor, so I'm going to wait for the wheels to center up and then we'll just go straight through here. Yeah, it, it really bugs me that the logic isn't working. It was working before I started recording. But like I said, a lot of things, if you've played Scrap Mechanic, you've done a lot of logic and or a lot of things with A lot of things with controllers, you've noticed that values have been changed and won't save properly a lot of times, and it's been a really pain, really big pain, worked around it, unfortunately it is coming to haunt me. As you can see, our wheel has also screwed up. That's fun. Now hopefully that's kind of the gist of this, it's kind of hard to show because of frame rate and the bug that we just encountered. So I'm going to have to probably end the episode here. I'd like to do a time lapse, but the AI itself is not sustainable for a time lapse. And honestly, it's really slow, and I don't think I have the attention span to sit and drive it the entire way either. So I'm going to go ahead and end out the episode, get back up here in the command center. I'm going to go ahead and end out the episode. So if you did enjoy the episode, please leave a like. If you have any suggestions for future episodes, please leave in the comments down below. If you enjoy the channel, enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe. It helps a lot. And right now, the best thing that helps out are shares. Those help out the best. Those help get the channel some exposures. So if you did enjoy it, I'm restarting my outro. So thanks for stopping by. Thanks for sticking around. And until next time, this has been Al showing off the behemoth, the slaggy glitchy behemoth until next time peace